What is going on, peeps? Ted Carr here, and got a fun training here for you. I'm going to be talking about the nine keys to hitting five to 50 grand a month with your online business. And the reason I chose these numbers is because typically people, when they're starting out online, they're wanting to make about five, uh, they're wanting to make about five grand a month. They think that's like ideal. That'd be that'd be considered success for them. Even maybe around ten grand for some people. And then there's people like myself who are doing 50k plus a month. And so I want to just share with you the 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 keys to, to hitting these numbers right here. And I you know I can't tell you how to make 100k a month because I've never done it myself. But I can tell you how I'm doing 50k a month consistently and how I got started with doing 5k a month consistently. So the very first thing we want to realize is it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you don't like, what you might be thinking, oh, do I do eBooks, courses, coaching? It doesn't matter. You could be doing drop shipping, merchandise. You could be selling freaking an OnlyFans membership. Like, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you don't have your state of mind optimized, you're screwed. It doesn't matter. All the rest of the stuff we're gonna go over here today. It doesn't matter if your state of mind is not optimized. In other words, if you're not well slept, you're not gonna be able to do any of what I'm gonna share with you. You're not going to be able to make any money if you're not well slept. You can't even function. You can't even make good decisions if you're underslept. When I don't sleep enough, I'm screwed. I can't do anything. I can't make a video like this as I'm making it right now. If I'm not well fed, I can't do this. Just like you, if you're not well fed, you can't perform well. You have to feed your body. You have to feed your temple with clean burning fuel, plant-based, you know, ideally low-fat, high-carb, nutrient-dense foods. Right? You want to make sure you're very well fed and well slept. Making sure you're exercising, making sure you're moving your body, making sure you have an attitude of gratitude rather than being a victim and complaining and stuff. If you're a victim and you're complaining and you're always blaming the outside world, none of what I'm about to share with you is even going to be remotely helpful because it's just going to go right back to you blaming the outside world. So an attitude of gratitude for what you do have, the attitude of like you are the creator of your own reality, right? You have to optimize the state of mind. Some of these things, very, some of these things I'm going to share with you, they help with that, right? So having fresh air as opposed to breathing in smoke and breathing in crummy air. Having fresh air is really important. That's why I left Chiang Mai, Thailand. The air quality was so bad. Journaling, getting thoughts out of your head and onto paper is so key. Next time you feel like all caught up in your head, just take pen to paper, write everything out. Write out a list of everything you're thinking about. Write out a list of all the things that you want to do or you got to do or you're worried about. And you realize that all that stuff you just wrote down was in your head. No wonder you were feeling all you know crammed up in there. Journaling is so key. Uh, Making sure your relationships are, are are healthy. Making sure you're not in any relationships that are dragging you down. Making sure you're not in any relationships where people are being like energy vampires. Making sure you're only in relationships with people who inspire you and who you feel really good being around. And then making sure you're having really good communication with yourself and with you know the people in your life. Making sure you're not um, not replying to texts or not replying to emails, not replying to DMs. Make sure you have really good communication uh, in your life. All this goes to say is making sure your needs are met. Okay, if your needs are not being met, it doesn't matter anything else in life. You're not going to be able to make five to fifty grand a month if your needs aren't being met. And even if you are making that money, but your needs aren't being met, it's so things are going to crumble. Things are going to start to fall apart, or you're really not going to enjoy making this money. Okay, so I want to share this with you here so you can enjoy making this money as well as actually make it in the first place. Because if you're making this money, but you're, you're not happy with it, it doesn't matter if you're making it or not. Because the only reason you probably want to make it in the first place is because it, you feel like it's going to make you happy or allow you to be more free. So up, when you optimize your state of mind and you're well slept, you're well fed, you're, you're moving, you're hanging out with friends, your needs are being met. It doesn't matter if you're making five to 50 grand a month anyway, because your needs are being met and you, you, feel, you, feel, um, you feel good inside. One of the needs that needs to be met, though, for most people is finances. So if that need is not being met, probably not going to be very happy. So let's move on. Once your state of mind is optimized, by the way, you can throw meditation in here. You can throw float tanking in here. You can throw breath work in here. There's other things you can do to optimize your state of mind. But just know that once that's optimized, you want to make sure it stays optimized. Okay, Make sure to keep that the priority. Keep this the absolute priority. Next, self-belief. Okay, So if you don't have utmost self-belief, if you don't really believe that you can do this, you're not going to be able to do it. Because when I wasn't believing that I could do this, that I wasn't doing it. And as soon as I started to get like this inkling of like, maybe I could do it, you know, maybe if he's doing it, if she's doing it, if they're doing it, well, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can do it. And I started doing some stuff, I started putting some stuff out there. And then all of a sudden, like I started getting this momentum happening, which then slowly built up my self-belief over time. And so self-belief, what it really means is like, 
you see yourself as the person who makes this kind of money online. And this is really tough to do if you're constantly hanging around your parents or friends from high school or siblings who, who see you as the person who doesn't make this money. So if you're, I, I feel a bit congested right now. I just drank some like vegan eggnog. Shouldn't have done that. God, I'm not going to do that again. That was just a one-time thing. Uh, <laughs> but you got to see yourself as a person who crushes it online. You have to see yourself as a person who is making this kind of money. And this comes from taking action. This comes from doing stuff. And this comes from hanging out with people in real life who are doing it. Okay, so the fastest way, by far the fastest way to increase self-belief, like I've, I've read books about self-belief, I've listened to audiobooks, I've watched YouTube trainings, I've gone to conferences about it. But the one thing that boosts my self-belief more than anything is hands down hanging around the people in real life who are doing it. When you hang around someone in real life, not and you're not just consuming stuff on the computer, which is, is good, but hanging out with people in real life so you can actually like touch them skin to skin with no pixels in the way, it makes it so real. And you realize if they're doing it, I can really do it as well. Because they're not just like this figure on a TV screen, not just figure on a computer, this figure on a, on a phone. They're an actual human being and they're doing it. And if they can do it, I can do it. And this is by far the, the fastest way to increase self-belief. And once your self-belief is firmly in place, the rest of what I'm about to share with you is going to start coming automatically. Okay, So this is so key. When I went to an event, I, I was charging like... I went to an event a couple, about, about, a, about a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, about a year ago. I was only charging 500 bucks for my program and I wasn't making much money at the time. I was making maybe, I don't know, like the most I'd ever made was like 18 grand in a month. Maybe, no, 25 grand was the most, but I wasn't consistent with that. I wasn't hitting that like every single month. And I was I had a $500 program and I saw everyone on stage collecting these awards, making millions of dollars. And I was like, how are they making millions of dollars? And I asked people around me, I was like, what are they, are they all doing? And they're like, oh, everyone on stage here, they all have programs over a thousand dollars or more. They either have a program that's a thousand bucks or more. Right then and there, I was made the decision. I was like, I'm going to create my thousand dollar program because I want to be on stage collecting my million dollar award. And then I got to go hang out backstage with all the people who are doing it, who are making millions and just realizing how, how easy it seemed for them to do it uh, made me just think, hey, if they, these guys can do it, I can do it. So then I needed to get clear on what to do. So I started asking everybody, what do you do? How do you recommend doing this? How would you solve this problem? If you were me, what would you do in this situation? I started asking people what they would do if, if they were me. I needed clarity on what I should do. And not having clarity is exactly, like not having clarity in your business is exactly like getting in your car, it's pouring rain, and you're driving down the highway, everyone's going like 120 kilometers an hour, right? But because your windshield wipers don't work, you're only able to go like 40 kilometers an hour or 20 miles an hour because you're so scared because you can't see. You don't have clarity. Your windshield is full of rain. And if you could just get those wipers to come and clear, you could actually see and you could drive faster. You could drive with more confidence. You could drive more safely. But because your windshield is full of rain, you can't see anything. You're driving slower. You're scared. You're more likely to get into an accident. Super risky. So clarity is not only safe, but it also allows you to go faster and drive with more certainty, more confidence, and it's more fun. So not having clarity, no bueno, no fun. So how do you get clarity? You have to go to a trusted source. You have to find out what to do from someone who's already doing it. So my parents like to give me advice on how I should run my life, how I should run my business. I asked myself, are they making 50 grand a month? If not, I don't really, I, I, I respect them as people, but I'm not going to take their business advice to heart. I'm like, cool, thanks for your suggestion. Thanks for your opinion. But if they're not making 50 grand a month, at least a month, I'm not going to take their advice on it when it comes to business. Just not. I'm going to take it from people who are doing around the same as me or more. Okay? So that's for business specifically. Clarity on what to do in terms of like fitness, I'll take from someone who does I don't care how much money they're making. If they're really fit, I'll take their advice. Um, I'll, from, with health, I don't care how much money someone's making in their health. If they're really healthy, I'm going to take their advice when it comes to health. Relationships. If somebody's broke but has an amazing relationship, I'm going to take their advice because they have an amazing relationship. 
So I, you got to pick and choose who you're taking advice from. Just because they have like results in one area of life doesn't mean you have to take advice from them in all areas. So clarity on what to do. And if you're not getting advice from somebody on what to do and you're trying to figure it out yourself, that's exactly like driving down the road, seeing a really nice house and thinking, you know what? I like that house. I want a house like that. I'm going to go build one. And you go and you go to the hardware store, you just buy a bunch of wood and you try and like recreate that house that you saw up the street, but you have no idea how to build a house. You haven't been in the house. You haven't got construction training. You haven't got any, um, you, haven't, you don't have any past experience. You don't have somebody overseeing everything. You don't have a blueprint. You don't have an architect. You don't have permits. You're just whipping a house together. It's going to be a horrible house, especially if you have no experience. So just trying to build a house based on a house that you saw is like trying to build a course or a coaching program based on a course or coaching program that you saw somebody else selling. It's, it's a terrible way about going, to, about going and doing it. What you want to do is you want to find someone who's already done it. You want to work with them closely. You want to ask them a ton of questions every step of the way to make sure that you're doing everything properly to code. Okay, You want to get exact clarity on what to do, short-term and long-term. You have long-term vision in mind as well. That's key. Now that you're clear on it, you want to now focus on doing it at the exclusion of doing anything else. This is where... This is where the the men get separated from the boys, so to speak. This is from the this is where the women get separated from the girls. This is where the uh, the winners get separated from the rest of the pack. How committed are you to going all in on this? How committed are you to living life of no distractions? How committed are you to closing the windows, locking the doors, turning your phone off, putting it in another room, and living a stimulant free lifestyle? Like if you're relying on coffee to get through the day, if you're relying on green tea, if you're relying on yerba mate, if you're relying on black tea, if you're relying on pills like Adderall or something just to help you get through and get stuff done, you're probably either highly addicted or you really hate what you're doing. If you love what you're doing, then you have to wean yourself off that addiction and you have to, we don't have to, but you can if you want, you you. You ought to um, aim to live a life of sti a stimulant free productivity. And if you truly do hate what you do and you're just using stimulants to get through, then you must switch up what you're doing big time. Okay? You do not need coffee to do what you love. You do not need co your coffee to live a life. You do not need stimulants to live a life. You need to have passion you need to have love for what you're doing. And uh, you do not need a substance to do that. The thing that separates the, the, the boys from the men and the, and the girls from the women, you know, is who goes all in, who takes it seriously. Okay, so you have to really focus on just running your business and having nothing else. Like, I've completely cut out all my hobbies. I do not have any hobbies. Like, my, uh, my mom came over last night, first time I saw my mom in a few weeks, with my sister, first time I saw my sister in like half a year. She came over with my cousin, first time I saw my cousin in like a few months. Came over last night for like a a couple hours to see my new house and see my uh see what i'm doing here and my cousin asked me she's like what do you do um, when you're not working and i was like um i go to the gym and i go for audiobook walks and i was thinking i was like wow it's the only thing i do when i'm not working i'll go to the gym for like an hour and sometimes i don't, don't even go to the gym i just work out downstairs but i usually like to go to the gym see other humans interact say what's up that's nice get the human interaction going, go to the gym for about an hour, maybe 90 minutes, and then I come home. And if I leave anywhere else, I'll go for a walk in those woods with an audiobook and listening to some of my mentors, some of my coaches, and um, just taking notes on my phone as I go. So I'm just really soaking in uh, good, good knowledge, good information. That's it. That's all I do. So if, and I'm thinking, like, I just started running my business the business I'm running now, I just started it maybe like five, six months ago. If I just started five, six months ago going all in, then like I'm just freaking getting started. Imagine where I'm going to be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, five years from now. All the people I'm learning from, they've been doing it for five to 10 years and they're absolutely crushing it. I'm just getting started because I'm taking their advice. So you like, I'm, I'm not saying you should uh, get clarity from a trusted source because I'm wanting to sell you coaching or anything myself. You can go get this help from anybody else out there if you want. I'm saying to do it because that's exactly what I've done. That's exactly what I'm still doing. I'm still getting more clarity. I'm still 
focusing on, on building up my self-belief. I'm still focusing on optimizing my state of mind. I'm still trying to cut out more distractions and, and eliminate other things on my agenda. I still want to focus more on just going all in and creating videos like I'm creating right now and making my program better and better and better. I still have room for improvements. And that's the fifth one right here. Improving how you're doing it. Always be refining. Always be refining while also be okay with not being perfect. Okay? So let's break that down. If you're not improving how you're doing something, you just do it once and you just let it, you know, keep, keep, keep you let it stay that way. It's, you're going to be able to look back on it in a month and be like, wow, there's so much room for improvement there. Whether it's the emails you've written or the videos you've been making or the, the messages you've been sending or the way you're doing phone calls or the way you're doing coaching calls, like you can always be improving how you're doing them. You always want to be refining this. It's an ongoing process. You also, at the same time though, you want to be okay with not being perfect initially. So whenever you launch a new program or a new course or try something new, don't worry about being perfect because perfectionism is really just a, a socially acceptable term for procrastination. If you're suffering from perfectionism and it's stopping you from getting stuff out there, you're just trying to be, um, you know, you're just trying to put a put nice label on being a, a procrastinator. So eliminate the identity of being a procrastinator by eliminating the identity of being a perfectionist. Because if you have the identity, if you have the self-belief of being someone who's a perfectionist, by definition, you're also having the identity of someone who procrastinates. You want to eliminate that. It's not a healthy one. Instead, you want to be uh, have the identity of someone who gets stuff done no matter what. Okay, Get stuff done no matter what. That's the new identity that you want to adopt. Get stuff done no matter what, whatever it takes. And always be improving how you do it. Always be refining. But be okay with it not being perfect initially. Just get it out. All right. Next, you want to ask for help when you're stuck. I do this a lot. I'm really good at this. I ask for help a lot. I ask a lot of questions. Every week I have a, I have a folder in my Google Drive here called um, questions for my coach. And I have multiple coaches. I have a coach for ads. I have a coach for sales. I have a coach for um, uh, just like entrepreneurial lifestyle. Like you have to have coaches and you want to be able to ask, you have to be able to ask, you have to be asking questions weekly, ideally daily. If you can get access to a coach who's going to help you daily, that's the best. Because when questions come up, if you don't know the answer, you've now like realized, hey, here's the thing that's holding me back right now. And if you just only are able to ask a question like once a month or like once a year to get that question addressed, you're moving so slowly because you can't address this bottleneck right here. But if you think of a question like, hey, I have a question. I'm not sure how to do this. You realize a bottleneck. You can give it to your coach. Your coach takes it apart, dissolves it for you. You're like, ah, now I can move forward. So you want to be able to ask for help, ideally at least once a week, if not more. And you want to ask for help often. If you can't ask for help from a coach, at least contact customer support. If there is no customer support, try to ask a friend who has an answer. If your friend doesn't have an answer, try to hire a freelancer to do the work for you. Right? But ideally, the best thing to get is a coach, a coach who knows what to do. They can just answer the questions for you just like that to keep you moving forward at all times. But whatever you do, do not go it alone. Okay. So there's, there's this quote. It's like a... I think it's an African proverb. It's like, alone, you can go a lot faster, but together, you can go a lot further. And so what you want to do is you want to have this nice dance between you and your coach where you ask your coach for help, they give you the answer, and then you go and you act quickly and do it by yourself. You get everything done, go back to your coach, ask for help, they give you the answer, you go back to it yourself, go back to ask your coach for help or refinement or review, and you just keep going back and forth. That way you can go the distance while still making progress quickly. Okay, so ask for help when stuck. This is such a key. This is the whole like point of hiring a coach in the first place or having access to customer support in the first place or having friends in the first place. Like what are friends for? Ask them for help while also you know, providing support. And typically when you help your own friends, you're helping yourself. Well, always, not typically, always. Whenever you help your friends, you're also helping yourself. And same with your coach. When your coach helps you, they're helping themselves. So don't be afraid to ask them for help. They love to help you. Coaches love to help. That's why they're coaches. Seven key element here is persistence. Like this is not going to happen overnight. You have to give it time. I asked my coach the other day, I'm like, how are you so good? How come you have like the best answers to everything? He's like, I've just been doing this for a decade. Like I've just been doing this longer than you. Way longer. So that's that, like just give it time. Persist, 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 and do not feel like you're gonna solve it overnight. If you do solve it overnight, cool. You still have a lot to learn. 
if you do if you do make 5k overnight cool you're probably gonna be able to make 50 grand in the next 30 days then but give it time give it time be patient and, and and love love the process love the process love the game more than the points and uh you know whenever you get off track because you're gonna get off track so that's what happens but whenever you do get off track ask for help get back on track okay next is the, the, these two are the most like practical out of all these um once you have all these in place these are these these, these two are going to be what you're ever going to be seen not not practical i mean tangible okay so having an amazing offer like if you don't have an amazing offer written out on like a google doc or on a piece of paper or like on a google slide or on a website or something how how what are you selling like where is your irresistible offer like, what are people trading you money for you need an amazing offer and an amazing offer in my mind is an irresistible offer and an irresistible offer is an offer that makes a highly desirable result feel like it's inevitable so the way to make an offer irresistible is by making the result making the highly desirable end result seem inevitable so for example let's say i want to be able to dunk a basketball and there's a program that's going to teach me how to jump high enough to dunk a basketball and currently i can't jump to high enough to dunk a basketball so my issue is i need to be able to jump high enough so i can dunk the basketball and there's a program out there that teaches me how to do it let's say it's a thousand bucks if i pay a thousand bucks i'm gonna be able to dunk a basketball i'm not going to sign up for that program unless i'm 100 certain that i'm going to be able to dunk a basketball with that program there needs to be certainty because certainty is the number one buying emotion and so that offer, if it's displayed in the, in the right way, it's going to allow me to feel like dunking a basketball is going to be inevitable if I just trade $1,000 for it. All we're doing with money when we're buying programs is trading money for something. I trade 1000 bucks, I give 1000 bucks, and what do I get back? I'm able to dunk the basketball, the ability to dunk a basketball. Let's say weight loss. Let's say I'm, have a, I have a gut and I don't have a six-pack. I trade 1000 bucks, I get a six-pack. If I'm 100% certain I'm going to get a six pack from this program, I'm going to pay the thousand bucks. Okay, so it needs to be displayed in a way that makes it feel inevitable. And the way to do that is to use something called an offer stack. Offer stack. That's one way of doing it. Another way is, is of course, using your know, testimonials and stories, which we'll talk about next. But an offer stack is really just a, a list of things that people are going to get, your customer is going to get when they join your program, like a list of things that are gonna help them execute and make that result a reality for them. Now, the last thing you need is an amazing story. An amazing story because it's, how do I say this in a non like factual way? Uh, before I had stories selling my programs, I would just try and sell with facts. I would say like, this program is great because it will X, Y, Z for you. Didn't really sell that well. Once I introduced stories into my program and started teaching people in, in story form by saying like, uh, hey, I used to have terrible acne all over my face, my back, my neck, and I tried everything to get rid of it and nothing worked. But then finally I found out about the raw food diet. And as soon as I got on the raw food diet, I thought it was going to work really, really well. And it didn't. I was like, what the frick? Now I've really tried everything. But then I made one small tweak to my raw food diet and with after I made that one small tweak, my acne completely cleared up. Do you know what that small tweak was? Everyone says yes. I say cool. Well, as it turns out, fat is where your toxins live. And so I, when I was eating a high fat raw vegan diet, I sell all the toxins in my body. So they're still coming out of my skin. Once I switched to low fat, the toxins no longer had a house. They had to leave. All the toxins left my house. My skin completely cleared up and I was now acne free. And that's just one of the benefits I've gotten from eating a low-fat raw vegan diet. Now, if you'd like to learn how to eat a raw food diet, a low-fat raw vegan diet as well, I put together a 30-day coaching program to teach you how. Then people sign up. So that I use story there to sell that, as opposed to just saying, like, this program's great because it's going to teach you this, 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 and I'm going to give you this, 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 this. Like, the story is what makes it real. Because facts tell, yeah, facts tell, but stories sell. Humans, we are wired for stories. And... When you share your story using this framework right here, they sell really well, especially when you make it very emotional. So the framework is BBDDNW, and this stands for a brutal before, a divine discovery, and a now wow. 
So brutal before, I had acne all over my face, my chest, my back. I was embarrassed to take off my shirt. I felt hideous. Uh, people made fun of me. I was very self-conscious. And uh, I thought I was going to have to live like that for the rest of my life. And I was really afraid of getting scars, like physical and emotional scars from, from having all that acne. And then I discovered a raw food diet. Oh, no, then I discovered that like the food you eat affects the way your, your skin is. So I switched to a raw food diet, thinking that that would, I would really do it after I cut out all this other food. And it didn't work. Nothing worked, even though I switched to raw food. But then I made that small tweak, went low fat, boom, acting cleared up within a week. I was so happy. I almost cried, took my shirt off, wore my shirt, uh, went shirtless for many years. Most of my YouTube videos were filmed completely shirtless. And now I'm, uh, I'm, I've grown my YouTube channel to over 30,000 people. Like 90% of my videos, I don't wear a shirt. I'm so proud of not having any acne any, anymore. And um, now I help other people clear their acne with a raw food diet as well. So that's just a short little story example. But I started with the Brutal Before, talked about the discovery I made, and now where I'm at now. So that's a really simple story structure that works well. And uh, when you have an amazing offer, an amazing story, you're going to sell a lot of your program. If it's a program people actually want. If, if, it, if it promises a highly desirable end result okay so that's it just to recap optimize your state of mind make sure you have that strong self-belief you have clarity on what to do you're focusing on doing that and nothing else you're always improving how you're doing it you're asking for help whenever you're stuck and you are putting out the persistence to make sure you're getting it done no matter what you have an amazing offer and you have an amazing story because if you have all this you're going to crush it if you need help with any of this if you need help creating an amazing story if you need help creating an amazing offer, if you need help being persistent and staying consistent with this, if you need to need a coach to ask for help, if you want to improve how you're doing something already, if you need help with focusing, if you need help on clarity on, on what to do, if you need help boosting your self-belief, if you need help with optimizing your state of mind, I am here for you. Okay, All you have to do to, uh, to get some help is head over to tedcarclass.com. Watch that video. At the end of the video, you'll have a full understanding of how all of this stuff goes into play and how you can really benefit from implementing all this stuff. Uh, TedCarClass.com is going to show you how I started my business and how you could potentially start yours. At the end of the video, <clears throat> you'll be able to book a call with either myself or someone on my team, and we can go through these with you and see which of these um, nine key areas that you need the most help with, and then we can devise a plan on helping you get started implementing what you need to implement so that, so that you can get the results you're looking for, which is probably hitting anywhere from five to 50 grand a month. So. That's that. That's it for now. Again, just head over to tedcarclass.com if you'd like uh, some help implementing the stuff. But for now, I'm going to bounce. I will catch you all later. Peace and have a great day.